Genesis 3 is not teaching us about zoology any more than Genesis 1 is teaching us about astronomy, where we have the sun created after we have days. I mean, how does that work? But let's just put that aside for now. And I want to ask this question just for the average person watching this video and even the evangelical scholar if they do. The first question is, do you believe that John was correct? The Apostle John writing in the book of Revelation. Do you believe that John was correct or mistaken in Revelation 12, 9? This is the verse where John, we might as well just click out to it uh, so that you can see it. Revelation 12, 9. This is where John mentions the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan. So the serpent, the devil, and Satan are connected okay, in this verse. It's the only time in the Bible where these, these terms are actually connected in the same verse. And this is the last book of the New Testament. But the question remains, do you think John was correct or not? If you think John was correct in this identification that, hey, the, the serpent back there was really the devil, you know, the, the one who becomes known as Satan. And by the way, look at the way John words this. That ancient serpent who is called, okay, who is called the devil and Satan. It doesn't mean, you know, John's not saying because John knows his Old Testament. This does not need to be read as though John is looking at Genesis 3 and seeing the word Satan in there. He's not. It's not there. But that rebel comes to be known as the devil, which is just, you know, the, the slanderer, the liar, and Satan, the accuser. Okay, this individual rebel becomes known by these terms. That's all John is saying, and he's connecting the dots. So if you think John is correct, then you must conclude that the serpent in the garden was more than an animal. It's not just a snake. If you say he's mistaken, then you have a serious problem with biblical coherence and really biblical inspiration you know, at, that, at that point. And for evangelicals, again, I don't know how you're gonna take that position. Second question I would ask you know, of, of viewers, and again, you know, anybody else, if we were in a different forum, you know, scholars who are saying, well, you can't really, you know, this, this, this view isn't, isn't, you know, what most scholars think. I don't really care. Okay, I'm asking a serious question. I just asked one, do you think John was correct or not? If you say he was correct, then the serpent in the garden is more than a snake. Question two, do you believe that Genesis 3 was intended to provide us with lost zoological knowledge? Is Genesis 3 a, a zoology lesson? Now, I've, I've mentioned this before, but if, if, you, if you put the question that way, is Genesis 3 really designed to teach us about, you know, catch the wording here, about the evolution of the snake before it had legs and could talk and now the snake as we know it now? Again, I think that's ridiculous. But you'll see it in evangelical literature. And I think, again, that's why a lot of scholars react you know, against it because it's kind of cartoonish. Genesis 3 is not teaching us about zoology any more than Genesis 1 is teaching us about astronomy, where we have the sun created after we have days. I mean, how does that work? Uh, again, you, you know from the, the class on metaphor and just the class where we, we illustrated metaphor with Israelite cosmology, the, the purpose of these chapters is to teach the reader who God is against all the other gods why we're here, who put us here, what our purpose is, what our destiny is, the whole concept of imaging. It's designed to teach us, yes, that, that there is a God and he created what we know here, but God doesn't bother to use people who could give us a sophisticated 21st century presentation of science. If he did that, God made a, a horrific mistake because he had people writing in the second millennium BC and the first millennium BC, and the first century AD, they are not capable of giving us a scientific presentation that would satisfy a 21st century audience. And that's a good thing because 500 years from now, we'll be laughing at points of the science that we think is just settled now because it'll change. 
That's not what scripture is about. God deliberately, this was his own decision. He did not tether the truths he wanted to communicate to something, i.e. science, that he knew would change and would never stay the same. Again, we, we talked about this extensively in the metaphor episode. I have lectures online, again, I directed you to. But if you're, gonna, if you're gonna take that position, then it's absurd to think that Genesis 3 turns around and teaches us zoology. So again, how could you draw that conclusion? I don't think it's teaching us zoology. I do think John was correct that we have a divine being here, either in the guise of a serpent, or we, we, we should look at the, the term Hanakash, which is the serpent, in different ways. I think, I think personally, and you know this from reading Unseen Realm, that what's going on with that terminology is we have a double or even a triple entendre with the Nakash, because depending on whether you consider it a noun or a participle, it can mean the snake, the serpent, it can mean the one who practices divination, like deception, or it can mean the shining one. And all three of those things are gonna be sort of stock ways of presenting supernatural evil later on in the Hebrew Bible. 